Good morning, Carol. And Beefy. And everybody else that subscribes or stumbles across this little channel. I've got the uh, patio door wide open. It's beautiful weather. But you might hear next door chickens. No dog today. Well, not until later. I've made notes. That's two episodes. Oh, hay fever. Need a quick drink of coffee. Yeah. Fishes Lounge with excellent coffee. So, this album called to me, and I know I talked to you yesterday, I was going to sort of do a little tease, but a little bit more teasing. Born in the 30s, in London, sort of it was like, East, like well, West Essex. You've come to Essex, did stay about five miles away. He contracted polio, was in hospital for 18 months. At Black Knightley Hospital, which is, well, was. It got demolished, sold to Glan, sold off, it's now a big house estate. Black Knight is probably about five miles from here. He was good at art, taught under Peter Blake, which I didn't know, and taught in various colleges around South Essex. But I think music was his first love, musical poetry. And before I forget, I had to uh, get the phone out. His delivery style, a bit like um, what's his name now? I think he's Schneider at the B-52s. Um, who very much is Sprechgesang. I don't speak German. Um, sort of spoken lyrics. Not quite singing. Which is fine. He did it perfectly well. His influences were musical. And at the time... Well, some artists, their shows were, I don't know, near the knuckles, you might say. <coughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, his lyrics do paint a picture. And I think that's one of the biggest things with artists, is when they're singing. And as me as a writer, I suppose, creating that mental image where you can take further. I actually met him in a pub in 1986, I think it was, North London. I was there with my girlfriend and her brother. And Beefy, we were drinking Guinness, as was him. I just ordered a pint and he was like, please, enjoy. I think I just said, hello, like your work. He nodded, said, thank you very much. We went on our way. What else can I say? That'll do. Right, so what am I talking about? Injury. He was, I think, Kilburn and the High Roads, but this is him going alone. New boots and panties. Um, this is from 1977. His first solo album. Not solo, but the band who uh, later became the Blockets. Well, I think they were the Blockets. So that's the front. Brilliant cover. There's the back. We've got the band there. I said, yeah. Charlie Child, drums. Norman Watt Roy bass. I was, I'm, yeah, say it now. Norman, he was born in India. He's still going. He's a, uh, these people are all in their 70s now. Yeah, unfortunately, he died 2000, I think it was. Um, Norman Watt Roy's playing style. Because before the bass was just like a guy in the corner just banging out a rhythm. But his style of almost playing the electric bass as a I want to say double bass, but a bass, classical bass, where it's sort of sliding the fingers. And it's the first time I saw it, which is, I think, the main thing. And it still gets with me today. Uh, we've got David Payne on the saxophones, Edward Spate, Balakita, Jeff Carter on the Moog, the synthesizer, photos, Chris Gabrin. This record was not produced and recorded at the workhouse. And you know, it's very faint at the end of it. So, cover from 1967. Definitely cardboard. I mean, it's uh, suffered the uh, ravages of time of being uh, 46 years old. I'm not that old, really. Produced on Stiff Records. I don't know if you remember them, uh, Stiff Records, Carol. 
I'm trying to think of other artists on there, but they were, this was Get Out the Mainstream, punky, post-punk, which was, uh, yeah, there was very much the big established out of the prog rock, get the punk scene, Malcolm McLaren, that was Stiff Ripple too. But they were just, it was different. It was a big fuck you to society sort of thing. And the establishment. So this is good. And then, just, let's get the right way. Various photos. It was brilliant. There's the man. Which is, yeah, again, paper. And because it is 1977, beefy, it's black vinyl. So you've got there's the label. On two. Yeah, so. Um, still shiny as you can see in the reflections 100 foot gram vinyl which is really good need a bit of a clean but nothing too desperate put it on well well the production again the stereo imaging the placement of the instruments was fantastic Again, I keep banging on about Mill Mock Roy. But that was the saxophones. That, I suppose the band, yeah, just the keyboards was very, very much a, a thing. Because like, I think it was just prog rock bands and they had a keyboard. And I suppose the thing is, he had a keyboard as well. So it's just one of those things which they had, which other people didn't. Well, it's gone now, isn't it, I think. So, yeah, fabulous production. It really is. Right. The music, wake up and make love to me. It's yeah, it is. It is almost him speaking the lyrics, which is good. He was a big fan of Gene Vincent, rock and roller in the fifties, sixties, and uh, the second song, Sweet Gene Vincent, which yeah, it's got a vibe to it. I'm partial to your abracadabra, which um. That's why the double entendres are brilliant. My old man, Billy Ricky Dicky. <laughs> Billy Ricky's what? How far from him? I think it's down the A12. About, I think, I don't know, 15 miles away. Good morning. My name is. is it, I'll put it on there. Should prepare myself. Never mind. Technology, huh? Being prepared, planning. That's the whole point, not of this channel. It's not the slick production. It's the idea of you just sit down, have a coffee, and and he speaks this first bit. Yeah, good evening. I'm from Essex. In case you couldn't tell, my given name is Dicky. I come from Villa Ricky, and I'm doing very well. I had a love affair with Nina in the back of my Cortina. A seasoned up hyena could not have been more obscene. So she took me to the cleaners and other misdemeanors, but I got right up between her rum and her ribena. I have no idea what that means. But, yeah, brilliant. Billy Reed Dickey. And then, side two, Clever Trevor. If I was a woman, blockheads. Pasto, Patricia. Black young man, I can't remember which. Got to be very careful now, because YouTube, at the beginning of the one of the songs, he goes, I'm not going to say the word because YouTube might get the word and block the video. He goes, A-holes, bar stewards, effing C's, and pricks. Now, as a, it came up, 12-year-old boy. Yeah, 77, 12-year-old boy. Just to hear, and he doesn't say them, he uh, shouts them out. It was, oh, naughty, brilliant. I think it's half his charm. He had uh, his way, which is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I loved it. 
Um, and his lyrics are very observational lyrics. It's just not a song. It's as almost, not almost, he lived it. I think that's one of the, uh, he did. Yeah. Oh, it's brilliant. It's, I don't want to scratch it. Yeah. Of its time, 1977. Yeah. Getting out of 374, the three day week and crises and austerity and just uh, trade unions and strikes because management were idiots, the unions were idiots. I think we're hopefully a bit better these days. Um, and uh, oh, it's time. Seminal? Perhaps. Fucking brilliant. Definitely. Do I have anything else to say? No. So, Carol, do you own this? Have you heard it? Not on this, and it's on a later album, which is one of my fake. Hit me with your rhythm stick. Again, that singing, um, spoken singing. My standout track. Hmm. I heard the first one, Make, make Love to Me. It was Just telling the story. I really do. It's a great album. A bit different from Iladi's Opoa, but of its time. Man was a genius. Yeah, he was a genius. That's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Picking up Luna later. Got for the weekend. Till Sunday evening. I'll catch you all later. Have a good one. Here's a good coffee. Coffee? Coffee even. Till next time, which will be soon. I'm going to do some classical. I know I've been saying it, but I'm going to do some classical records. Then you'll know I know nothing about music, but it's what it, it's in here. That's what it is. Thank you for watching.